Welcome back to another video on my channel, Millsurf Rifles 1945. Today we're going to continue our series on Nagoya Type 99 production and we're going to start getting into some of the transitional series of Nagoyas. Today we're going to look at a Series 4 and a Series 5 rifle. And right off the bat, you're going to notice a few distinct changes that take place in this series. Series 5 is where you really start to see some of the things that you'll see continue on into Series 6, Series 7, and right up until they start uh, the fixed sight kind of last ditch rifles as they're known as. So why don't we take a look at both these rifles and see some of the differences. So the first area we'll start with is on the left side of the receiver. So right here we have our Series 4 rifle with the series marking right here. Serial number, Nagoya, final proof mark. And again up here on our fifth series you'll see the exact same thing. Um, you've got your proof mark here for a Series 5 rifle. You've got your serial number, your Nagoya arsenal mark, and of course the final knob proof. So these things are about the same through both rifles. And then on the top of your receiver, we again have similar markings. We both have the Type 99 text across the side here. They both have full intact chrysanthemums. Neither of these have been defaced. As we get into some of the later rifles that we're gonna look at, we will see a few examples of some defaced rifles. One area that is also the same right now is that both rifles will have anti-aircraft sights as you can see right here on our fourth series and right here on our fifth series. However, this will change uh, throughout the series. You will see these sights actually disappear on a fifth series. And I can show you an example of that on a different rifle I have. So this rifle right here is actually a fourth series Izawa, which was made around the same time as maybe the fifth series was. And as you can see right here, there are the attachment points for anti-aircraft sights, but there are none installed. And actually, this is 100% correct. This rifle would not have had anti-aircraft sights on it at the time. A lot of people will see this and think they have to add the sights on, but a lot of times the Japanese were using up spare parts. It wasn't always a first in, first out kind of thing. So even into the uh, six series, you will actually see sights like this with attachment points. Sometimes you'll even see six series rifles with AA sights, but that's something we'll get to once we get to the six series. Another area that these rifles share similar traits is here with the dust cover. Both of these rifles have matching dust covers. You will see matching dust covers into the end of the fifth series and then they start to disappear by the start of the 6th series. So finding a matching dust cover on the 6th series rifle is highly unlikely, if improbable. But the 5th series, you can see dust covers on them up until the near the end of production. Moving on to another area where a significant change occurs is with the monopod. So right here is our 4th series rifle, and right here is our 5th series rifle. And as you can see, the 5th series has an attachment point for a monopod, but it is in fact completely correct to not have one. The monopod seems to have started being discontinued at the very end of the fourth series and possibly some very early fifth series rifles would have had it. But by the time this fifth series rifle, which is in the 30,000 range would have been made, um, that would have been discontinued. So this rifle, despite having a block for a monopod is 100% correct without one. The best way to tell is to look at the front of the rifle and to see if there's evidence of a monopod ever being there. Typically, if there's been one that's been on the rifle for any extended period of time, it'll show evidence of that. And on the fifth series rifles, you generally will never see that. Moving towards the front of the rifle, we'll see another significant change that occurs in the fifth series and continues on until the seventh series is that we have switched from a three screw band as seen here on this fourth series rifle to a two screw band. So this fourth series rifle actually has a screw on this side, a screw on the other side, and then one elongated screw through here, while the fifth series rifle just has two elongated screws that go all the way through the barrel band. And this is actually to facilitate a bit of a change that occurs um, in this series with cleaning rods. So let's take a look at that now. So one of the other changes that occurs starting in the fifth series is the style of cleaning rods. So we actually switch to a screw in cleaning rod on the fifth series rifle that goes right into this little lug right here. While on the fourth series rifle, it's actually the long style that I demonstrated in another video that goes all the full length of the stock and actually clicks in with a little button here. Right here, this is just a small screw uh, that goes right up to here to the cleaning rod. So we'll look at the cleaning rod next. So starting in the fifth series, you start to see a screw-in style cleaning rod. It's more of like a sinker even, you could call it. And right here, 
You can see there's a small threaded end to this that screws right in to the mounting point that I showed in the previous video. There's a small little hole here, uh, possibly for use with a rope or something like a sinker, basically to pull this, help pull something down there, down the barrel. You'll see this up until the end of the seventh series where it starts to disappear at that point. And there is actually no cleaning rod or cleaning stacker used at all after that point. Another change that occurs is to the stock of the rifle. So starting in the fifth series, you actually lose this drain hole right here that is found from all of Nagoya production up until this point. So there's a drain hole on the side. As you can see right here, no drain hole. And as you can see on the bottom of the stock, there's a drain hole located right here on our fourth series. But on the fifth series, there's nothing drilled there. These are basically just low points in the stock to allow water or gunk or anything like that to kind of just fall out of here if it, if it was getting wet or something like that. Another major change that occurred to the stocks actually started in the late third series. I just don't have an example of a third series with this style of stock. But what they actually started doing at Nagoya is instead of doing this straight splice all the way through, through the rear sling swivel as seen on the second series example it is actually angled more up here like this and you'll see this on all nagoya production through the end of the war it'll have this higher splice that does not go directly through the rear barrel or the rear sling swivel and that continues all the way till the end of production another change that occurs starting in the fifth series is actually in regards to the chrome plating so as you can see on this fifth series bolt there is no more chromed bolt face. This actually stops in the fifth series production in general. You may see a few rifles throughout it that still use it, but in by the end of the series, you will no longer see a chrome line bolt face. However, you will continue to see a chrome line bore through almost all the fifth series into the sixth series. My example does have it. It's just kind of hard to get a good picture of it, but they will be chrome lined in general. And while it's generally the same as with all previous series, we'll go over some of the serial markings. So right here, you've got your, uh, in this case, five digit serial number. So all the parts will match by these final four digits here. So here's your side of your receiver. You'll also have your serial number here on the bolt handle and the extractor. Here on the stem of your safety. Here on the body of your firing pin. Here on the back of your dust cover. And you can also see right here is our reproof for Torimatsu showing that this is an original Nagoya dust cover. And your final spot will be right here on your front barrel band on your bayonet lug. So thank you once again for tuning into this video on Nagoya Type 99 production. The fifth series obviously is an interesting one because we really start to see a lot of changes that are gonna be a staple of the later Nagoya production rifles up until the seventh series when we start seeing what most collectors refer to as like last ditch rifles. So with the fifth series, we think the production began in 1943, probably late 1943. These are based mostly off of guesses because there is no concrete information that exists to show specific dates for any of these rifles being produced. It's based a lot of the average production of it based on other rifles uh, from different series and arsenals, like sharing similar features and stuff like that that we do know when they were produced. So overall, as we get into the 6th series and 7th series especially, we're going to see a lot more simplification to the design. You're going to see a lot more part changes and things like that. Um, and obviously everything with the 5th series, this is not all-encompassing, only because there are some variants that I don't even have where you see different things, like different types of barrel bands and stuff like that, that I can't cover completely in this. But if you look online on any of the Facebook forums, if you go to gunboards.com and look at the Japanese section, you can definitely see other examples of 5th series rifles. So next series, we'll be looking at the 6th series of production. So until then, thanks for tuning in. Bye.